In this video, I'm going to talk about audio and why it's so important to have good audio. My name is Trui and I make streaming support videos. Stream smarter, not harder. But before I begin, I stream every Tuesday, Friday and Sunday, 8pm Central European time on twitch.tv slash So we're going to talk about audio. Urgh. First of all, most of you might have this one, the Blue Yeti. It's not the greatest microphone, but it will do its job. The biggest mistake SC streamers make with this microphone is that they use the wrong pattern. With this microphone, you will get this manual, and in this manual, it actually tells you about all the patterns. Right here, it tells you about the cardiac pattern. This is the one you want to use. It's the one with kind of looks like a heart. And like it says, it's meant for podcasts, voiceover, vocals, and instruments. But the most important thing, you see this picture of a guy in front of a microphone that only records on one side of the microphone, the side that you were talking in, and it doesn't record the rest of it. So right now for this microphone, it will only record this side, the side I'm talking to, and not this side. So if there's a lot of sound coming from this side of the microphone, it will be picked up less than from this side. If you don't use the Blue Yeti, but you use a different microphone, check which pattern your microphone has and where you actually need to talk in. Because some people talk in this side of the microphone when the pattern is on this side. If you have a shotgun microphone, it will actually record at the end of the microphone and then obviously you need to talk inside that end. So check the pattern of your microphone. To make your microphone sound good, your room needs to sound good. This might not make sense, but if you go to your bathroom and you start singing in there, you would hear kind of an echo. If you would record a microphone in there, you would hear that echo on the microphone as well. If you have a room without a lot of furniture in it, the same effect will happen. If you want to get rid of this effect, if you have problems with that, make sure to get more cloth in your room. Blankets, cushions and curtains will actually absorb the sound and make it sound better. I don't really have that problem because I got a bed behind me, but if you do have a problem, just lay some pillows and blankets on the ground. You also want to make sure that there's no loud things in your room, like a fan or somebody drilling. I mean, that one is obvious, right? If there is something loud in your room and you can't really get around that, I would recommend you using a noise gate. Wait, I just recommend you using a noise gate. What this does is it doesn't pick up audio until a certain audio level. If you go back to OBS, we can see my voice here in this section and we can see how loud I'm talking. Right now I'm mostly between 20 and minus 10 decibels so if I would say that everything underneath minus 30 decibels would be cut off my voice will not be cut off but everything else that is in this room will be cut off. So when I'm not talking there's no sound being picked up by the microphone. But how do we get this into OBS? So click on the cockwheel and then go to filters. Click on the plus and add noise gate. Right here we can see open threshold is minus 26. That is minus 26 on here. So this is 25, 26 is like around here. So if the sound doesn't exceed minus 26, which is right here, it will not go on. You will not hear anything. Closing threshold is minus 32, which means that if we're above minus 26, we start recording. But if we're dropping down under the minus 33, we're going to stop recording this voice. So if you're having a lot of noise behind you and it is above minus 32, then it will keep being on after you talked. If the mic keeps being on after you talk, higher the close threshold value. If you want to turn the noise gate off, just click on the eye icon to turn it on and off. The next thing we can add here is gain. What this does is we can actually make the microphone sound louder. For example, if we would sound really, really quiet all the time, it would only be around minus 40 decibels. We can bump up 20 decibels to be at minus 20. Be aware though, you don't want to use too much gain because it's going to sound really bad. <laughs> if your mic makes a weird static noise, use noise suppression. This will remove the static noise of your microphone. Hopefully. If you played horror games, you might have screamed all of a sudden and then just talked a little bit more quiet because you were scared. This can be really hard for the viewers, where all of a sudden the sound gets so loud. There's a little trick for this and it's called a compressor. Just add the compressor into the filters. And what this does is that if you're gonna scream, <laughs> that it will be like around the same amount of volume as that we're gonna talk really, 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 really quietly. It's probably better that I not put this in like a comparison thing because yeah literal ear rape 
When I first started streaming, I had a problem with hearing the game sound, where I heard it super loud and chat couldn't hear it at all. So for me, I had to blow my ears to let them hear the game sound, and that was not really an option. I found a way to go around this though. It's called Voice Meter Banana. Voice Meter Banana is a virtual mixer, and you can basically set the volume for your output device, like these headphones, to be a lot lower than for the stream. If you just start it out, it's quite of a complicated program. So I'll leave a link down below to a video that will explain you how it works. One of the things a lot of people do as well is sitting far from the microphone. If I sit right here, my microphone wouldn't sound as good as I sit right here. This sounds a lot better. So try and sit as close to the microphone as you can. I mean, don't need your microphone. Because you're sitting so close, your mic will start up picking <laughs> sounds really weirdly. Get a pop filter, they're really cheap. And if you don't like this big disc next to your face, you can always get like one of those windshields. Like you see, my mic is actually on an arm. This makes it possible that if I tap on the table, the vibrations of that don't go too much into my microphone. I'm also using a shock mount. This is a device that holds my microphone into rubber bands and makes it almost impossible to get the vibrations from my table into my microphone. So if I tip on the table, you will still hear it, but you don't hear it through the table. If you're having your microphone on your table, this is happening a lot more and especially with typing on your keyboard, it might sound pretty bad. If you cannot afford an arm or a shock mount, I would recommend you use a piece of cloth or maybe like one of those big mouse pads. If you put your microphone on top of those, it will vibrate a little bit less. But the best way to make a microphone sound good is to talk clearly. If you're mumbling and I don't know what you're saying, you can have the best microphone in the world, but I'm not gonna understand what you're saying anyway. So speak clearly. And if you're not a native English speaker, don't blame your accent because you can try and speak clearly anyway. Like I do. I still have an accent, some words might sound weird to you, but I speak clearly anyway. Although, not if you ask YouTube auto captions. I used to do all these things wrong. I used to sound horrible, but I also just didn't have charisma on the camera. <laughs> so don't worry, you can improve it. And to make this not an empty promise, I'm gonna show you that I did too in this next video.